Hello and welcome back to the Norse Gods series, or today, the Norse Goddess series. So this is actually only the second goddess I've talked about during this series. So the first one being Freya, and this one being Frigg. Now, interestingly enough, this is probably where the line's going to stop on the majority of goddesses to talk about. Now, there's goddesses such as Skadi, or Idun, or maybe even um, Ran that have a little bit more information, but even then, it, it's so sparse that it's really hard to create an entire video about one particular goddess. And as you actually will find out during this video, is many of the goddesses are mentioned within the story of Frigg, um, within her handmaidens. And so, talking about the goddesses of the faith is difficult just simply because we don't have that much information. Now, I will say we do have a pretty decent amount of information about Frigg. Now, I will be doing this video similar to the way I did Baldur as well as I did Heimdall in that the actual information portion of what we know about Frigg and how to venerate and honor her based on this information will all be contained in this one video, unlike previous Norse God series. Now, I have talked about a variety of deities, starting with, I started with Thor, and then I talked about Freya, and then Loki, Odin, Baldur, and Tyr, and then recently Heimdall as well. So there's a lot of videos in this series. I am hoping to cover the majority of written about deities that have more than just one stanza um, in this series, but I am starting to get pretty darn close to covering all uh, the deities that we have in any significant portion within these two um, books, the prose and the poetic edda. So if you haven't already, please go back and check out those videos. But with that, let's go ahead and dig into the Norse goddess Frigg. Slight warning, of course, I am not an Old Norse expert, I am only someone following this faith today, so the way I pronounce certain things is not going to be perfect. Um, and once again, the information is coming from the Poetic and the Prose Edda, and for once, we're actually going to have a little bit of information from the Saga of the Volsungs as well. But starting with the Poetic Edda, um, I do want to go ahead and just cover what we have in this story, because of course the Poetic Edda is more of the primary source material, whereas the Prose Edda is a little bit more of a, you know, Snorri's interpretation interpretation of the myths uh, from his life. Um, so within the Volospa, we get right away um, the story of Baldur, which is one of the, the things we know the most about Frigg, um, sadly, is the death of her son. So I'm just going to read to you stanzas 31 to 33, um, which kind of cover the story of Baldur. I saw Baldur, the bloody victim's Odin's son, resigned to his fate. There stood the mistletoe, growing slender and fair, high above the plain. That tree, which seemed harmless, caused a terrible sorrow when Hoth took a shot. Baldur's brother was born soon thereafter. He was Odin's son. He took vengeance while just one night old. He had never washed his hands nor combed his hair. Then he put Baldur's killer on the funeral pyre. Frigg wept in Finsalir for the woe of Valhalla. Have you learned enough yet, Allfather? So covering the story of Baldur, something I've already talked about on this channel, when I talked about Baldur. Um, so obviously Frigg had a part in this, as she was the mother of Baldur. And we'll see this explored further in the prose edda by Snorri in more detail, um, with a little bit more panache. But yes, that, you know, Frigg is involved, obviously, in Baldur's death. Um, and then another death that Frigg is involved in, or at least affected by, is brought up in stanza 52. Then comes the second sorrow of Frigg, when Odin goes to fight the wolf, and Frey goes to fight Sort. And then Odin, Frigg's husband, will fall to Venner. And basically, that's it. That's all you get in the Volaspa is the death of Baldur and the death of Odin and, of course, Frigg, uh, you know, being affected by the deaths of her loved ones. Um, so not a lot is given there. You're given a little bit of information about Frigg, uh, you know, of course, her lineage, if you don't know anything about it, as far as family, you know, who she's married to and her children. So one thing that I did find interesting that I do want to draw a note to um, is the fact that two of her children were involved in the beginning story, obviously, with Baldur and Hother Hother taking that shot um, and killing Baldur. Uh, interestingly enough, Vali, the son that took vengeance on Baldur's death um, and killed Hother Hother, um, is not the son of Frigg, um, but is in fact the son of a Jotun named Rinder, um, which was also a lover of Odin. So, again, interesting there. And that's something that I see referenced later in the Prose Edda, um, is the mentioning of Frigg being at odds with the lovers of Odin. 
And then the next story is probably the biggest Frigg story that we have. Um, and it's really, it's weird because it's the biggest Frigg story because she is heavily involved, but really just in the prose of the story, the poem that came before the story. During the actual story of Grimness Small, which is what we're talking about, Frigg is not heavily involved. It's really Odin talking to Agnar and Garroth about um, the mythos of Norse mythology, um, but Frigg is involved in the framework of the story. So the actual story of Grimness Small um, is the story of Odin and Frigg sitting on Hiloskioff, which is the throne of Odin, uh, looking over the worlds and observing two foster children that they both kind of took a fancy on. Odin looking after Geralt while Frigg looks in after Agnar. Now Odin basically says, oh, Geralt is a much better king than your Agnar. Agnar is in a cave having babies with troll women. And Frigg basically says that Geralt is a terrible host and a bad person and that, you know, her foster child is better in the end than Odin and so they essentially make a bet and Odin's like well I'm going to go prove that Geralt is actually a good king and a good host and so Odin goes in disguise as shadow face um, to basically inspect the king and, and his hosting abilities. Now, this is very interesting, my favorite bit of the story. Frigg is very cheeky, and she actually sends one of her handmaidens, Fula, to talk to Geralt and tell him, oh, there's a sorcerer roaming the lands, and if dogs do not like uh, this person, um, that's a sign of a sorcerer. And so she basically warns him that Odin is going to be coming and to basically treat Odin poorly so she could win this bet. Now, Geralt does prove himself to be a bad host and a bad king, and then Odin is proven wrong when Geralt's son, I believe, um, talks to him um, and offers him a drink um, and shows him generosity, and that uh, son's name ends up being Agnar. Um, and so Odin is proven wrong by Frigg in this situation, and so Frigg is right. Um, but again, all of this happens before the actual poem takes place. At the very end, you're given a little bit about um, you know what happens afterwards, and then you have the full story in the beginning. But Frigg is one of the main characters in the framework of why the story is happening. And again, I think the, the thing to really focus on here is the fact that Frigg sends Fula to fool Garroth and to you know ultimately uh, play a trick on Odin as well. So she's quite cheeky at the same time, a very, very similar trait to Odin uh, there as well. Uh, the next story we actually get Frigg involved in is Locusena, uh, which, you know, every deity is involved in Locusena in some way. So I'll just go ahead and read to you the section where Frigg and Loki are talking against one another. Uh, so stanza 25 is where it starts, and this is Frigg starting the conversation. You should not discuss your histories openly in front of everyone. Whatever you two gods went about in your younger days, that belongs in the past and should stay there. And she is referencing here Loki and Odin speaking against one another, um, basically saying Loki is father children, or mother children. Um, and then Loki said that Odin uh, spent time as a, uh, as a witch, as a woman. Um, and so this is Frigg responding to that. Uh, but Loki's response to that is, Silence, Frigg. You are Fjorgen's girl, and you have always been lustful. Think of you, Odin's wife, accepting both Villar and Ve into your embrace. Frigg returns with, You know, if you had a son like Balder sitting here with me in Aegir's Hall, in the presence of these gods, I declare you would never come out alive. You would be killed shortly. Loki returns with, You must want to uh, recount even more of my mischief, Frigg. After all, I'm the one who made it so Balder will never ride home again. Uh, so not a lot to dig out of here. Again, we have a reference to Baldur's death and Loki being involved in there. Um, you have a reference to Frigg's father, which is Fjorgen's. Now, the, and then you do have a reference to something that is also referenced in uh, the prose edit as well, which is Frigg uh, being with uh, Vili and Ve or Villar and Ve at some point while Odin was away. And then Odin eventually came through and was like, no, you know, they basically shared Frigg. Whatever, you know me, if you follow this channel, you know me and sexuality and the gods. I really, you know, these are human things that we have put onto the deities. I don't really think the gods are running around having sex. And you see that a lot in Locus and you would see a lot of sexual insults about who was sleeping with who in Asgard. Um, so, you know, I don't put much validity behind that in any way. But yeah, I mean, it's in there and again, it's referenced in the prose at it later. I wanted to take a brief intermission here to talk about a few things. One, if you're enjoying this video, please make sure you like and subscribe and all that stuff down below. Put a comment how you're enjoying it, a story you thought were, it was interesting so far. Um, and if you want to help this channel out even more, please think about going down to Patreon and supporting what I'm doing here. Um, but recently we have launched our nonprofit community as well, the Fellowship of Northern Traditions. I have a link to the website down below. So if you're interested in attending one of our community gatherings, that's how you find out more about it. And if you want to help us out, we do have the story there as well and it might be at this time of releasing this video but we are pushing for the hall land here very soon so we do have our gofundme information there as well if you want to support us in building that hall but ultimately thank you so much for watching the content here and whatever support you're able to provide but now back to the video
And that's it. That's all you get a frig in the Poetic Edda. Um, so not a lot. Um, so I do want to go ahead and roll into the Prose Edda and talk about what we have in here. We do have a very big section um, to talk about in here, um, which is the Handmaidens of Frigg. Now, this story is not referenced in the Poetic Edda, so it's hard to say where Snorri got it from, but, you know, I think there is validity to it, uh, considering the specificness of the details. Typically, the lies that I see Snorri putting in here, as far as the Christian stuff, is coming in the beginning, where he's talking about how Odin was just a man, he came from Troy, um, and then Odin was, you know, just human, and he basically started the lines of kings in Norway and stuff like that, because that's what Snorri's purpose was uh, when tying to talk about Odin was trying to establish lineage from the gods. Right away here in the very beginning, um, we're given a reference to Frigg um, as Odin's wife. And this is it's kind of talking about Odin and his family line and his lineage um, and basically where all the races of beings came from. Um, so here it says his wife, being Odin, um, was called Frigg Fjorgen's daughter. And from them is descended the family line that is called the Aesir race, who have resided in old Asgard and the realms that belong to it. And the whole line is divine in origin. The earth was his daughter and his wife, referring to Yorth. Um, out of hers we got the first sons, which is Asa Thor. Um, there is a brief mentioning here, which is a very interesting one, on page 21 of my Everyman's Edda, um, prose Edda here. Um, so page 21, it is mentioned that Frigg is his wife, being Odin's, and she knows men's fates, though she does not prophesize. A very small mentioning, and it, it even says there's a separate writing here, basically right under there. I mean, I can kind of show it to you here. Yeah, so basically there's this like little spot like right there um, that has a subline from a different writing that we don't know about. Again, this is one of the, the maddening things about this, um, about the prose edda. Snorri references writings that some of them we don't even know exist anymore. Um, and of course he does reference the pra, the poetic edda, then known as the Codex Regis, or later known as the Codex Regis. So yeah, it's interesting that uh, Frigg's ability to prophesize things, but she doesn't share them. So you can see this future, but she does not share them or she does not like, you know, use them. Um, which made me think, again, this is my just my personal opinion, that Frigg is tied to the Norns in some way. Um, you do have, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the Middle Norn. Uh, I think it is, yes, it's Verthandi, is the Norn of what is happening now, uh, which uh, in references and throughout history and art um, is shown oftentimes as a mother, as a mate, like as a, you know, as a mature woman. Um, so this could be Frigg in some way. There might be a connection with Frigg there. Again, just my own personal hypothesis. Um, but it is interesting, this whole, like, weaving of fate, uh, you know, prophesizing kind of thing. Okay, then we come to page 29 in my edition, and this is where we get the list of handmaidens. So we just get the list of all the goddesses um, here. So the Asinur, um, the highest being Frigg. Um, she is a dwelling called uh, Fensalir and is very splendid. And then we just go through, I'm just going to go through the list of the goddesses mentioned here. Um, Freya is mentioned in here as well. I don't think she's considered a handmaiden of Frigg, uh, more so the other goddesses mentioned here. Um, Freya is considered highest in rank um, next to Frigg, um, and she has her own mythos and everything around it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to read through this line here. So the second goddess is Saga. She dwells at Sokvebek, and that is a big place. <laughs> it's literally all that's written about her. That is a big place. Oh, my gosh. The third is Ir. She is an extremely good physician. Fourth is Gefjun. She is a virgin, and she, ad uh, she attends all who die virgins. Fifth is Fula. She is too a virgin and goes around with her hair flowing free and has gold bands around her head. She carries Frigg's casket and looks after her footwear and shares her secrets. Um, and then you have Freya, who is mentioned as, you know, the sixth goddess here. Um, again, uh, she is mentioned as highest in rank to Frigg. Uh, but then she kind of goes into her uh, parentage, uh, her father, like who she marries, and then her daughter and stuff like that. Uh, but then the seventh is uh, Siofen. She is much concerned to direct people's minds to love, both women and men, and is for her the name that affection is called Siophany. Eighth is Lofen. She is so kind and good to pray to that she gets leave from the Allfather or Frigg for people's unions between women and men, even if before it was forbidden or refused. Hence, it is from her name that it is called Lof, or permission, as well as when someone is praised, Lofat, uh, greatly by people. Uh, so that's an interesting one. That's given more information than most of the other handmaidens or goddesses. Um, and so if you're looking to do a pagan wedding ceremony, calling out to Frigg and Lofen might be a really good idea. The ninth goddess is Var. She listens to people's oaths and private agreements that women and men take between each other. Thus, these contracts are called Varar. She also punishes those who break them. So I can't tell, I mean, the way this is worded, private agreements between men, women and men, um, so agreements with love, but it also seems just oaths in general. So if you're wishing to share, uh, swear an oath, or again, to swear an oath of love in marriage, um, Var might be a very good deity to call out to. 
The tenth goddess mentioned here is Bor. She is wise and inquiring, so that nothing can be concealed from her. There's a saying, saying that a woman becomes aware, or vor, of something when she finds it out. Eleventh is Sin, or Sin, Sain? She guards the doors of the hall and shuts them against those who uh, should not enter, and she is pointed as defense at assemblies against matter that she wishes to refute. Thus, there is a saying that a uh, denial, or a sin, is made when one says no. So I guess it's sin? Interesting. Uh, again, the, the mythos of the handmaidens of the various goddesses is very interesting. Twelfth is Helen. She is given the function of protecting people whom Frigg wishes to save from danger. From this comes the saying that someone who escapes and finds refuge is Helenier. Again, just, it's just really interesting. There's a lot of little interesting tidbits here. Thirteenth is Snotra. She is wise and courteous. From her name, a woman or a man who is a wise person is called Snotr. Fourteenth is called Gana. She is sent by Frigg into various worlds to carry out her business. She has a horse that gallops across the sky and sea called Hofvarnir. From Gana's name, a thing is said to tower Ganefa, which goes high up. Soul and Beal are reckoned among the Asinir, but their characteristics have been mentioned above. There are still others who function in a way to wait in Valhalla, serve drink, and look after tableware and drinking vessels. These are called Valkyries. Um, and then it goes into the Valkyries, which are servants of Odin. Um, so that is the handmaidens, the goddesses. Um, and that's what's interesting about this is like, I can't make a video about Var. There's just not enough information to talk about Var or Vor or Sin or Helen or Snotra or Gana or Sjofen or Lofen. Like there's just not enough information because this is really it. You know, you might get a few mentionings of like Saga. I think Saga is mentioned once in the Poetic Edda. And so a lot of the information about goddesses in general are contained within the mythos of Frigg. We can see that some of these goddesses kind of have separate duties and deeds, but a lot of them do do things specifically for Frigg and to, in service to Frigg. So again, we'll be talking about this more when we move to the end of this video. Um, but if you really want to connect with Frigg and call out to her, uh, calling out to her various handmaidens would be a really good way to um, direct what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do a healing ritual, speak about ear. If you're trying to do something with love, speak about Lofen. If you're w wishing to be given protection by Frigg, uh, call out to Frigg and Helen, um, who offers protection as well. Uh, so there are many different pathways you can go down here. So it's very condensed. I, I hope this is exciting for you. I find this exciting. I think this is really cool. Um, you know, even though we're not given a big picture of what these deities are, uh, what these goddesses do, we're given enough to really kind of expand on it um, in a ritual practice um, that I, it just makes me excited. So the next thing that's really mentioned in the prose Edda is an expansion upon Baldur's death and Frigg's role in that. So she's actually got a little bit more of a hand, according to Snorri and the, the prose Edda here. So in the story of Baldur's death, Frigg, of course, gives birth to him, and he's perfect in every way. When he starts to have nightmares about his death, the gods all agree to ask everything in the universe to give immunity to Baldur from death and harm. And all things in the world agree, except for Mistletoe, whom was too young to swear such an oath. Loki then disguises himself as a woman to go find out what is the one thing that can harm Baldur, um, and he speaks to Frigg. And Frigg responds to Loki, saying, Weapons and wood will not harm Baldur. I have received oaths from them all. Um, and then she says that Mistletoe is too young to, to give an oath, and then Loki finds that out, uses that to, you know, trick Hod um, into killing uh, Baldur. So after Baldur is killed, um, there is like a summons, you know, Loki is captured, um, and they send Hermund, which is one of the sons of Odin, not from Frigg, uh, down to hell to speak to Baldur and Nana, his wife. And Nana threw herself on the funeral pyre from her grief, and so she's down in hell um, with Baldur. And when Hermund goes down to speak with them, uh, one of the gifts that Nana gives um, in return to take up to um, Asgard on his way back, Hermund is given a linen robe by Nana to give to Frigg. So the reason I bring that up is because that might be a way to connect to Frigg as well, um, is something with this linen robe or the receiving of, you know, fabric or goods like that. Um, the last section here is really a bunch of just grab bag things that I figured I would put in here um, to help build an image of who Frigg is. On page 59 in my edition, uh, Frigg is listed as one of the guests in Aegir's Hall for a feast. So on page 67, we're given a kinning, which is a poetic device, you know, to basically rename something to give another name to, which is very famous in the sagas and Eddas. Um, so Frigg's, embr Frigg's Embrace is given as another name for Odin. 
Um, and on page 81, very briefly, Frigg is mentioned to have a falcon form. Uh, much like Freya, she can turn into a falcon. And then on page 86, we're given a list of kennings um, for Frigg. How shall Frigg be referred to? By calling her daughter of Fjorgen, wife of Odin, mother of Balder, rival of Jord and Rind and Gunlod and Gerd, the lovers of Odin, uh, mother-in-law of Nana, queen of the Aesir and the Asinir, of Fula and falcon form in Finsalir. So that gives you a nice round out image. Um, you know, we mentioned this with the Heimdall video as well. I really like um, Snorri's kinning sections where we, you know, where are the different things that we can call, um, you know, these deities. And I think it gives you a nice overview. And I think this is a really good thing for worship and practice um, is to use these kinnings to call out to these deities. And then of course, all the goddesses and handmaidens are really great as well. Um, so the last thing here is really the saga of the Vol songs. Um, so this is a story very similar to, uh, it's too big, it's up there somewhere. Um, the Saga of the Icelanders. This is really just a collection of stories along with the Saga of the Icelanders. Um, you know, and this one contains the Saga of Ragnar Lothbrok as well. Um, so a bunch of hero stories. So this is where we see interactions between the gods and goddesses and actual human beings, which is very interesting. And so the Saga of the Vol Sons, they're talking about Ken Rear. Rear in chapter two. And so King Rear prayed to the gods endlessly for a child. They're, him and his wife could not conceive. Um, and so Frigg, and this is, a, this is a quote, Frigg heard their prayer and she told Odin what they asked for. He was not in any doubt about how to help. And so he sent one of his Valkyries who was named Halod and he gave an, a Valkyrie an apple and he told her to give it to the king. She took the apple and turned into a crow and flew into Rerir's kingdom and found him where he sat on a burial mound. Um, the Valkyrie then gave him the apple. Um, he took a bite of it, went to his wife, knowing what this was. He ended up getting his wife pregnant, but he ended up dying of old age or illness. And so he didn't get to go to Valhalla. His wife then remained pregnant for six years. She could not have this baby until she finally told people to cut the baby out. And at that point, the baby was full grown and she came, was cut out of her and she died. And the last thing that happened was Volsung, this child, kissed her, his mother. What the fuck? <laughs> Some of these stories are absolutely insane. Um, so it's weird, you know, the, the thing to take out of here is that Frigg is someone that you can call to in childbearing issues, I believe. But then again, maybe not, because that child will apparently come out of you full grown and be, basically be the death of you. Uh, so again, just a really interesting story because this is more of an accurate account of things that happen, um, if not a little bit more mystical. But that's it. Really, there was no artifacts I could find. Those were the only stories I could find. Again, the, the, the goal of this series is to provide you 95% of the information out there, most of the information that you can take and build a practice out of. Um, so now I want to take you over to my altar space and we'll continue this conversation and talk more about how you can worship and honor Frigg today and maybe just a small experience that I've had. And that's actually on this channel as well, talking about my experiences with Frigg. Honestly, the worshiping and honoring of Frigg today is pretty simple from what I understand of it. Really the aspects of Frigg that I think we as human beings can connect with are really the mother and the matriarch. So if you're seeking help in childbearing or having children or even the raising of children in any way, I think Frigg is really the deity to reach out to. And we can even see that in the source material. Even if it was a little bit of a strange story, she still takes interest um, in childbearing and having children. Now, if you are really wanting to connect with femininity as far as both being the mother, but also being the boss, you know, I don't know if the kids say the boss bitch, um, but it seems like Frigg kind of fits that role. If you really want to connect to um, being a leader and being a woman at the same time, it seems like Frigg is a really good deity to reach out to um, because she was the head of Asgard. She was, you know, right there alongside of Odin. We're really, we really see them as equals. Now we may have more information about Odin and more stories about Odin, but we see them sitting on the throne together and they both seem to be very unique individuals especially in the story of Grimness Maul um, where Frigg even has a hand in tricking Odin um, and winning that bet so we definitely see them as, as really equals in this situation um, and I think that's a really important part of uh, Norse paganism in general that we see the female roles while not as recorded um, but oftentimes they're in very equal power situations um, you know in certain situations at least with Frigg um, but again Frigg is really, Frigg and Freya are really the only deities we know anything about um, but regardless well, hi, Miri. Why is it you always come out when I'm talking about the goddesses? What's up? What do you have to say about Frigg? What do you have to say about her, huh? All right, I'm done with you.
Now, aspects that we can all call upon, men, women, it doesn't matter, um, I think definitely are the aspects of the handmaiden. So if you're seeking in particular things as far as the aspects of handmaidens, uh, especially with ear um, and being a surgeon, being a healer, you know, any form of healing rituals, it would probably be good to call upon Frigg and ear. And this is something that I have personally done. The only other video I have on this channel where I really talk about Frigg in any way um, is an offering to Frigg I gave oh my gosh, nearly two years ago at this point, um, and it was a healing ritual where I woke up really early in the morning to watch the sun rise and do a healing ritual to Frigg, um, calling for help for healing for somebody else. Um, yeah, it was a really beautiful offering, and honestly, if you haven't watched it, it's really good. Uh, go check it out. It was a really great adventure. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful scenery. So I would say that is the aspect that I've connected to personally, is her connecting to healing, her connected to ear. Um, but there are so many other aspects to her, especially in those handmaidens, um, if you wanted to connect to, you know, love, to protection, um, to oath swearing, uh, you know, things like that. I think these are all things that you connect to via Frigg. Um, really just look at any of those aspects um, of her handmaidens. I think those are things you can all call upon Frigg with. Uh, but overall, I think she has a very motherly presence. I mean, anything that I've connected with her personally has been that feeling of motherhood, um, of loving, of caring. Um, so if you're looking for a deity that's just one to connect with, to feel warm with, to feel happy with at the same time, I think Frigg is going to be a really an amazing deity to connect with. Now, as far as offerings to give her, um, I have mentioned this before in the past in a video, but I do think giving her offerings of anything you would give a mother, chocolates, red wine, maybe flowers would be a really easy, um, quick way to connect with her as well. Um, but looking at the source material, looking at what we know from the prose Edda, um, using those kiddings to call out to her, using her handmaidens, I, I think this is an aspect I've really connected to, at least in the past year, um, is calling out to deities using those kinnings we know. You know, uh, how shall be Frigg be referred to by calling her the daughter of Fjorgan, wife of Odin, mother of Balder, rival of Yord, a mother-in-law of Nana, queen of the Aesir, of the Asenir, of Fula, of Falcon Form, and Vinsalir. I think these are, I mean, even right there, just like that alliteration there, uh, you know, the queen of Fula, Falcon Form, and Vinsalir. I think that would be a really great way to call out to Frigg during a ritual. And as always, if you're just looking to do a small little ritual, it really can happen right here at your altar, whatever it is, whether it's a bookshelf, a little corner, or something you built outside. Um, just calling out to Frigg using those kinnings, calling out to, you know, uh, the wife of Odin, mother of Balder, you know, mother-in-law to Nana, uh, you know, the queen of Fula, and, you know, and all that stuff. And, and then just asking, you know, basically having that conversation, you know, saying, oh, you know, I'm trying to have children. Um, or I ha I'm having trouble with my children now. Um, I'm looking for, you know, uh, I'm trying to be a leader in the community. I'm a woman, um, you know, and I, I need a, a guidance from the all mother. Uh, you know, things like that. I mean, it can be really so simple. And then giving that offering to her um, is a really great small ritual that you can do, um, you know, to Frigg. And then if you want to get more complicated, you know, if you're doing bigger rituals, that's when you're going to start bringing in more elements, you know, bringing in those offerings, but also also bringing in things that connect you to her from what we know from those source material. Bringing in linen, you know, you know, calling out to her, saying, you know, when um, Harriman went down to hell to speak to your son Balder upon his death, your daughter-in-law, Nana, gave you a gift of a linen robe, and I have brought you that here to connect with you on a deeper level. You know, that's when you really start diving into the good shit. And so that's what I hope this video serves as. You know, obviously, I really think you should get your own source material, um, but hopefully this gave you a really good starting ground to diving deeper, but also starting off as well. I think that's really all I have to share with you here. I may be doing an offering to Frigg um, further down the line, but I really hope this did give you a good baseline of starting your own practice um, and worshiping and honoring Frigg today or at the very least just gave you some really good information um, in a nice condensed way but I think that is it and this might be my last Norse God video for a while I hope you've enjoyed this series um, please let me know down below if there's any other deities you think that I should explore um, I do think oh that's one Frere, I need to do Frere, so I'll probably be doing a Frere video here coming up. Um, but I'm definitely starting to run out of the core deities. So let me know down below if there's any deities that you think there is enough information to really do a full video about. Obviously, I'm not done talking about the gods, but as far as the Norse gods series, I think we're getting pretty low on uh, a significant amount of information. Uh, so let me know down below who you want me to talk about next. I will be doing Frere as well. But otherwise, thank you very much, and until the haul.